Hello guys. Uh, hi, this is Rashmi here. Hi Rashmi. Good evening. Yeah, hi. Good yeah, evening, very good evening. Here. Yeah, this is Mohan here, the instructor. For, uh, yeah, hi. Yeah. Uh, let me check the participants whether uh, everybody has logged in. Okay. Okay, so I have the participant list here now. Vinayak, yes, he is there. Ramakrishnan is there. Saundarya is there. Shruti, Shruti has not yet logged in. Shwati has not yet logged in. Meghna and Rishmi are there. Okay. Hello, guys. Uh, very good evening. Uh, this is your instructor, uh, Mohundra Jagdishan, for the entire training program. How are you all? We all are doing good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So before getting on to the session, now uh, let's introduce about uh, ourselves and let me check whether the recording is on. Yes, recording is on. Okay. So warm welcome to um, the training program. So this is myself, uh, Mohanaj Agdishan. Uh, uh, I graduated the uh, video KCT and I have around 11 years of experience in software industry working in uh, like I worked in Tori Harris Business Solutions which is in Bangalore uh, okay and then with regards to the training I have around 10 years of training experience for people um, Excel VBA web designing in both areas okay so like uh, now, I would like to know about yourself, like um, what is your background and what is your proficiency and uh, what is your level of knowledge in programming languages, any any programming languages, even if you don't have any knowledge in programming languages, you can tell no problem at all. Okay, so Python is like that. Even if you don't have programming knowledge, you can learn Python, no issues at all. Okay. And uh, what is the, your expectation from this training? Okay, so let me call by name. Um, what you can do is either you can type or else you can just unmute yourself and then you can let me know about you. Okay, let's start with Ramakrishnan. Hi, Ramakrishnan. Let's introduce about ourselves, Ramakrishnan. Okay, no problem. Rashmi? Uh, hi, uh, myself Rashmi. Uh, yeah. I, was, uh, I have around seven years of seven plus years of experience in okay. uh, testing domain. I was uh, a manual tester. I was working for a Cisco project. Okay. And uh, so my expectation from the training is like uh, I have, you know, very basic training from the Python and I would like, uh, you know, expertise level of uh, uh, mm -hmm. Python coding. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Uh, Thanks, Rishmi, uh, for your intro. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Basically, I'm yeah. From Let's hear it from Soundarya. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. yes. Sorry, Rishmi. Sorry. 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 Yes. Go ahead. Hello. Rishmi. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You can go ahead. Sorry for interruption. You, you can go ahead. Uh, basically, I'm from Bangalore. I did my engineering okay. from AMC Engineering College, Bangalore. So, All right. that's what I have from my side. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. Meghna. Meghna. Okay, no problem. Thank you, Meghna. Uh, Soundarya. Soundarya? Okay, thank you, Soundarya. No issues. 
Okay, let me unmute everybody. Yeah, uh, Meghna, now you can uh, talk, I think. <coughs> Meghna? No, it's unmute. It's unmuted. Or else you can type in Meghna. Hi, hi, Meghna. Okay, Meghna has on and off your experience. She has basic knowledge on Python. Have it worked on it. Okay, thanks, Meghna. Thank you for your introduction. Thank you. Okay, let's hear it from Sandria. Hi. Hi. Yes. Yeah, I have got uh, three years of experience in MindTree and okay. I'm very new to Python. Uh, okay. I just have very, very basic knowledge on Python. Okay. And uh, okay. currently I'm working for DevOps. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Sandhya. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Vinayak? Yeah, hi. Hi, Vinayak. Yeah, so I was with MindTree from last 10 years okay. and I'm from the test, testing background. So All right. earlier earlier I was worked on Perl a little bit, but not okay. on Python. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Thanks, Vinay. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, Shruti, Shruti. Shruti. Hello, yeah. Yes, uh, hi, Shruti. Hi. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, you have just joined in, right? Yeah, uh, like uh, I just want to know about yourself uh, and uh, your background and uh, what is your expectation from this training? I just want to know about that. You can talk. I have unmuted you. Okay, thanks, Shuti. Thank you. All right, uh, thanks for introduction, guys. Thanks for your introduction. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute everybody. Okay. And if you have any doubts, what you can do is you can type in a chat window. Okay. And if you want to talk, all right, you can send me a request in the chat window, um, like. Please unmute myself so that you can clarify the doubts. All right. Anyways, after the, each and every topic, I will give you some 10 seconds. That is, I will unmute everyone and then I will give you some 10 seconds or 20 seconds. Okay. In order to ask your doubts. I, that is, uh, I'll just wait for some 10 to 20 seconds for your doubts. Okay. And based on your doubts, um, you will be unmuted. All right. Okay. And let me uh, tell the class flow, like um, how we are going to handle the entire training program. Okay, like it's a two hour session that is from today until August 5th. And we'll be, ha we'll be starting the session at 8.30 p.m. until 10.30 p.m. Okay, and um, there will be only uh, one break of 10 minutes. Okay, after one hour or after one hour, 15 minutes like that. Okay, there will be a break of one hour. Okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. There will be a break of 10 minutes after one hour. All right, okay, okay, guys, fine. And um, I have a small request uh, with all of you. Like, uh, I have two choices. Like, tomorrow is Friday. Um, I have to travel somewhere. Okay, so like, uh, I have two choices for you guys. One is 
we can have the session from 7:30 to 9:30 or we can uh, postpone the session uh, and then we can have the session on saturday from 7 to 10 to 10:30 pm okay so like which one you prefer or if you want the session at 8:30 pm to 10:30 pm also you can let me know either can you have the session between uh, 7:30 to 9:30 pm tomorrow or we can cancel tomorrow session and we can have four hour session on saturday itself like 7 to 10:30 or 7 to 11 like that or you want in the normal timing itself okay ramakrishnan is okay for tomorrow 7:30 to 9:30 i just want the confirmation from you all you can just type in the uh, type in the chat window okay meghna is fine between 7:30 and 10:30 rashmi is also fine rashmi is also fine ramakrishnan rashmi vinayak meghna ram okay vinayak is fine ramakrishnan is fine saundarya is fine um meghna is fine rashmi is fine I just want to know from two people. One is Shruti. Yeah, Shruti is fine. And what about uh, Swati? I think Swati has not joined in. Yes, Swati has not has not joined. Okay, so is Swati from anybody's team? Swati Ravindra. Is Swati from anybody's team? or do you guys know swati i just wait for some 2 uh, seconds or 3 seconds like that, or some 5 seconds like that okay okay fine okay fine 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 so i will ask uh, spring people coordinator to tell her about the timing change tomorrow okay yeah okay guys thank you thanks a lot okay and i'm going to discuss about the course outline okay that is what all we are going to cover all right what all we are going to cover in this training program okay so like um the order of the modules will be different okay because i'll be going in a flow okay it's like easy to difficult okay all right that will be the flow for the sessions all right okay so uh, first we will start with data types and uh, collections collections is nothing but list tuple dictionary okay and then we will be seeing os services like what all uh, functionalities that can be done with os module okay then we will see how we can write the pythonic programming okay like what are the rules that you have to follow when you write a python program and we will we will see like on development of functions how to create a files okay those things and then we have modules okay because this is very much important right modules is very much important okay we will see how we can create our own modules and how we can import it okay and then we will see like oops concepts that is classes and objects okay in this we will see encapsulation polymorphism and various types of inheritance all right and then we will see like gui programming using tk modules that is tk inter okay we will see the various controls like how we can place various controls and some small application we will be developing with gui programming okay and then db access i will be explaining the database connectivity with postgre db sql or mysql database okay with my local database actually okay and this is getting repeated over here i will cover regular expressions okay which is very much in that is sorry uh, most important concept in python not only in python if you take any programming languages 
or if you take any scripting languages that is very much important okay and then we will see like threads okay and then cga programming what do you mean by cga programming is nothing but front end how we can develop the front end how we can create a form and how we can access the values from the forms those things we will be seeing in cga module and finally we will see like network programming that is socket and some system administration activities okay and xml parser and in addition to these topics we will see decorators generators okay and also some part of web scrapping as well that is how we can get the information from the web okay so these are the topics that we are going to cover in these nine days okay all right nine days or yeah nine days okay yeah any doubts you guys have if you have any doubts in the course outline on which i have explained please let me know that is just ping on the chat window okay if you have any doubts just ping me on the chat window all right okay that's fine thanks guys thank you okay so let me say let me ask you one question okay why python those who know the answer can type in why python why do you want to learn python it's a open question to everybody why do you want to learn python what is the difference between what is the difference between compiler and interpreter what is the difference between compiler and interpreter anybody can answer just you can type in um, chat window anybody can answer just you can type in the chat window yeah so megna has told interpreter is line by line execution yes thank you megna for responding okay that is let's let, let me tell the difference between compiler and interpreter okay so compiler okay consider you have written some 100 lines of code and you have made some 10 errors syntax error or some runtime errors like that okay syntax errors let's say let's take that like that okay so now now if you want to execute your program first you need to compile it okay and compiler list out all the errors at one shot and you can't execute your program until unless you resolve all the errors okay and and one more thing is once you resolve all the errors it will produce dot o in case of c dot class in case of java okay so you have to execute your program using that third party object okay you can't execute your program with your code that is that you have written okay but if you take the interpreter consider you have made some error on the 50th line out of 100 lines okay what it will do is first it will take the first line if it is all right it will execute it then it will, it will go to second line if it is all right executed you can see the output of those okay and when it comes to the 50th line there is an error the execution stops at that point itself it won't proceed further so it won't proceed further until unless you resolve that particular error okay that is called interpreter and 
to execute a program it is not required to have some third party file like dot class or dot go you can execute um, with your code itself okay all right that is called interpreter okay and let me write okay so from now on okay from now on it's completely hands on okay so we are going to see each and every concept via particular examples okay so now hope you have installed python in your system okay if you want to check which version of python that you are using in your you can just say all right you can just say okay you can just say python hyphen b capital b so i am going to use 3.6.0 okay for the entire training program this is what i am going to use for the entire training program okay and how we can check you can create a file with the extension let me create a file called variables.py okay and then let me open it with idle okay and going to the editor idle all right i'm going to use the editor idle okay let me write print print hello python okay now you have to press f5 in order to execute your program you have to press f5 in order to execute your program okay so now our setup is ready to go okay the first one we are going to see variables what is the use of variables why variables okay what is the use of variables is the one which is used to store the values and is it is used to change the values during the runtime okay those are called as variables in c and java languages you have to um define the data type for the variables when you are declaring it right but here it is not at all required what you can do is just you can give the variable name is equal to value depends on the value that you have stored okay depends on the value that you have stored it will take that type so it is called as dynamic typing dynamic typing consider i have var is equal to 5 var is equal to 1.5 var is equal to this is free like this okay now if you see these three variables i have used the same variable name everywhere it is var 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 okay but i am using i am storing the different set of values okay now let me print the type of it print where let's say type of where okay let me let me just uh, copy that line okay let me just copy that line all right now if i execute it you can see first one is class integer second one is class float and third one is class string okay so based on the value which is present inside the variable the type has been decided okay it is not required to predefine the data type okay so depends on the value this will decide okay depends on the value this will decide the type of the variable okay all right hope you are clear with this and next one you are going to see multiple assignment okay next one we are going to see multiple assignment 
okay let's write multiple assignment that is okay that is if you want to store the same value to three different variables what you can do num1 is equal to num2 is equal to num3 is equal to 5 okay now what can i do is i can just print this okay num1 and similarly num2 and then num3 and similarly here num2 and then num3 okay if you execute this you can see all three variables have the same values now consider the scenario wherein okay you need to store the different values to three different variables okay in that case what i can do is i can write num float num string is equal to let me write 5 1.5 comma string okay now the number of variables and number of values should be same if it is not it will throw the error if it is not it will throw the error actually okay so now let me just print it so number you can see num and then let's have floating number or float let's have float num and let's have string is nothing but string okay so now if you execute it you can see everything like this that is 5 1.5 string okay so like this you can assign because this one we'll be seeing in lot of programs this one we will not see much okay but this one we will see lot in lot of places okay in, in our training program okay all right like for example uh, when you want to return multiple values from a function okay you can use this actually use th this kind of uh, representation you can use and when you want to extract the value from a set of collections you can use this okay all right okay so let me know if you guys have any doubts let me wait for some 10 seconds just ping in and if you don't have any doubts also please ping in so that I'll be okay if you guys have uh, no doubts so far. Let me just wait for some 10 seconds. Hello, guys. Okay. Ramakrishnan R has one question. What is the name of IDE? It is idle. If the name is I D O sorry. The name is idle. It comes with the Python itself. That is, whenever you install Python, okay, you can right click on the file and then you can say edit with idle. This way also you can access it or search for idle here. I D L E. See, here you can see. Okay, just click on that and then say file new and then say file new that also you can do. All right. Yeah. Oh, I have just uh, sent to Meghna. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's idle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Ramakrishnan. Thank you. Okay, Meghna has one question that in multiple assignments, can you please explain the second example again? Okay, Meghna, definitely. Okay, so here, here, that is if you say take the first one, it's like assigning the same value to multiple set of variables, that is to multiple variables. Okay, but if you want to assign the different values to different set of variables, Okay, then you go for this particular combination. Like, now what happens is, 5 will store to num, 1.5 will go to float num, 
string will go to this this variable. Okay, this is like let me write like this. This is string length. Okay, okay. This one will go to string. All right. You can have any name. It is not mandatory that you should have this name, but your variable name, function name, class name should be related. Okay. Only then you will be proper actually. Fine, Megna. Okay. Yeah. So um, when it will throw error? See, for example, consider I have three values in the right hand side and only two values in the left hand side. That is two variables, but here I have three values. Okay. Now, if I execute it, you can see here value error. That is too many values to unpack. Expected only two. Okay. Because here I have given three three values separate by comma, but here it is just two values. Okay. So now here we should give some three variables like that. Okay. All right, Meena. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So now. Let me go to the next topic, okay? Called string. Okay. Let me go to the next topic called strings. In Python, in Python, sorry, in Python, it is a string. It's an object. Okay, string itself is an object, and it is immutable. String is immutable. Because um, that is string can be reassigned to another value. Okay, string can be reassigned to another value. Okay, but individual characters cannot be changed. Okay. That is, let's take a string is equal to Python script is so efficient. Python script is so much efficient. Okay, so now each and every character can be accessed using access. That is, it will be stored in string of zero, and this is one, this is two, and so on. Okay, see now. First, let me print entire string. Print okay. entire string. All right. Or guys, is it, is it visible to everyone? Let me make it bold. Yeah. Okay. So string. Let me just print string here, okay? And then now let me say string of zero. That is each and every character can be accessed. See here, string of zero is p. Okay, each and every character can be accessed. Okay, for example, if I say Like one is to ten. Okay, let me write one is to ten. What is the meaning of this? That is, if you want to extract the portion of string that is slicing, string slicing. Okay, if you want to extract the portion of string, what you can do is, okay, you can give like this. That is, it will extract from index one until index ten. That is still index nine. That is, it will start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it will retrieve from index one till nine. Okay, that is ten. Okay. If I execute this, you can see y t h o n space s. Okay, this we call it as string slicing. Okay, and you can give like this as well. That is, let me give 
like 1 is to 15 is to 2. Okay, 1 is to 15 is to 2. That means, okay, we know till this is, is it is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? So, what will happen is, okay, first it will read the first index, then it will jump to two index, that is 1 plus 2, third index, then plus 2, fifth index, then plus 2, seventh index, ninth index, eleventh index, thirteenth index. Okay, if you execute this, it will read like this, that, that is YHN SRP. Okay, the third number is nothing but increment. Okay, the third number is nothing but increment. Okay, so it starts with first index and it will jump to two, 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 two index like that and it will go until 15. Okay, that is it will read the index 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Okay, 13 plus 2 is coming as 15. Okay, that is not the one which we have given. Alright, and if you give positive values, you can retrieve from left to right actually. Okay, if you want to retrieve, uh, retrieve the characters from right to left, okay, what we can do is we can give minus. See here, like let me give string of minus 5. Okay, I can give string of minus 5. So now what will be returning? Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and minus 5. C will be returning there. Okay, C is getting written there. Alright, okay, so string of minus 5 is nothing but C. Okay, say for example, can anybody tell me the logic on there is in other programming languages? What is the um, okay? That can once again 1 is to 15 is to 2. Sure, is me. Okay, that is you understood, right? 1 is to 10, you have understood, right, Rishmi? That is from index 1 until 9, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? So, when you give third parameter like this, what happens with this is first it will read index num, index 1, that is y, okay? Then what happens? Index will be incremented to this particular number, that is 1 plus 2, plus 2, 5 will be read. 5 plus 2, 7, yes, will be read. 7 plus 2, 9, R will be read. Okay? And 9 plus 2, 11, P will be read. Okay? Then 11 plus 2, 13, this space will be read. Okay? See now. See here, one space is there. This is nothing but jump number. For example, if I say 3 here, instead of 1, let me say 3. Okay, let me say 3 here. Okay, here I, here I need to change. Okay, you see. Okay, see now, like, first it will read index number 1, that is y. Then it will jump to 3 indexes, like 1 plus 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, go. Then 3 again, uh, 5, 6, 7, okay, then 10, right? Okay, once again, 1, 1 plus 3, 4, 4 plus 3, 7, 7 plus 3, 10 will be read, okay, that is I. Then again 3, okay, 13th index, that is space, okay, you can see here, one space will be there, see, one space is there, okay, Rashmi? Got it? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rishmi. Okay. So, can anybody tell? Okay. How will you find whether the string is palindrome or not in other programming languages? And how many lines of code is required for that? Or at least uh, just roughly tell how many lines of code is required to check whether the string is a palindrome or not. <clears throat> Roughly tell how many lines of code is required to check whether the string is palindrome 
or not? Roughly, roughly, not exactly, roughly you can tell me. Anybody or any number? Yeah, one line in Python is fine, but I, I want to know in other programming languages. At max 10 lines, okay. Any other answers? Okay, fine guys, thank you. Okay, so that is, in Python, what we can do is, I can just write, okay, okay, uh, let me write like this. If string colon colon minus one. string of colon colon minus one so now you can see it is printing in reverse okay if you are not giving anything it will take the entire string colon colon means entire string then if you give minus there it will take it from the reverse okay so within just one if condition you can check whether the string is palindrome or not like if string is equal to string colon colon minus one okay you can say print palindrome okay else i can say not palindrome like this okay that's it this is called checking palindrome or not in python actually See here, let me write madam. We all know it's a palindrome, right? See here, it is a palindrome. Okay, now let me write madam A. Okay, now you can see it is not palindrome. Okay, so like this. So it will simplify. Okay, all the, uh, all the concepts actually in Python. Actually. This is just a sample. Okay, all right. So any doubts with this? So far, let me wait for some 20 seconds. If you guys have any doubts, please ping me. If you are guys, if you guys are clear, please let me know. Let me just wait for some 20 seconds. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, so next one, what we are going to do is, okay, next one, what we are going to do is, next one, we are going to see string methods. Okay, next one, we are going to see string methods. Before that, we will see input method. input method which is used to retrieve the input from the user okay see here like string is equal to input of enter any string okay input of enter any string okay let me print it string entered by the user okay string that is Input is the method or function, okay, which is used to get the input from the user. See here, let me execute this one. Now, it will wait for the user input, okay. This will wait for the user input. Let me just type something here and then press enter. That is, once you press enter, the input will be accepted. See here, string is Python. That is, whatever I have typed. Okay. Now, let me, uh, let me print the type of it actually. Okay. Let me print the type of it. Screen. Okay. So now, let me just type Python here. 
and then you, here you can see class string okay and then let me input any number here let's input 528 okay here you can see it is a string okay so whenever Whenever you input any string or any content from the user, that will be considered as a string by default. Because input is a function which is retaining the values in string class. Okay. So now what you have to do is when you want to input any number, okay, when you want to input any number, what you have to do is you have to Type as it like int of like this. Okay, int of input of this. Like that. Okay, now let me see what is the type of it. Okay, now let me see what is the type of it. First, let me enter some string. It's a string. Okay, I didn't change it. That's fine. So now enter number. You can see class integer. Okay, one second, guys. One second, one second. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you for waiting. Okay, so now you can see 528 is, eight, 528 is class integer. Okay, so here I can just change the message. That's not a problem. Okay, that is just the user uh, message, user defined message. Okay, that is not a big thing. Alright, so now you can see we have input a number over here. Okay, alright, and now we are going to string. So, first one, let's see length. Length of string. Okay, length of string. Okay, that is print number of characters number of characters okay let me do one thing otherwise each and every time you lost for the input for that what i can do is i can assign this one itself over here okay okay so now let me take the string number of characters in the string Print the string of any printed in the previous one. So, number of characters, how we can find the number of characters is nothing but length function. Length of string. Okay. Length of string. Okay. Now, if you find it, number of characters are 29. There are totally 29 characters in this particular string. All right. And Next one we have very simple function actually upper and lower, which will convert all the letters to uppercase, all the letter to lowercase. Okay, so let me write it upper like string dot upper, and similarly let me write for lower, and here you can say string dot lower. Okay, like this. So now if I execute it, you can see uppercase functions and lowercase everything has been converted to uppercase everything has been converted to lowercase okay let me write something like this capital p and capital e and capital s like that okay so now you can see the difference everything has become a everything has been converted to lowercase okay all right and next function we are going to see is starts with and ends with okay it is like it checks whether the string is starting with the given uh, substring okay see it returns either true or false all right let me write starts with first i can write string dot starts with okay i can write python okay i can write python and similarly let me write ends with function so ends with and here ends with and then let me write this one efficient 
Okay, so for for now it written both true and false actually. See here, sorry, both both true actually because starts with string is starting with the Python only. Okay, string is with Python only and string is ending with efficient only. Okay, so for both it will return true in this case. Okay, for for both it will return true in this case actually. Okay, all right. Any doubts so far? Any doubts? <coughs> Any doubts, guys? Hope every, everything is clear so far. Okay, thank you. And next one is okay. Next one is uh, split. Okay, as the name indicates, based on particular set of characters is nothing but delimiter it will split the string into list okay see here now what i am going to do is spt str is equal to okay string string dot split based on space so based on space strings will be split okay like each and every word will be one one element in the list actually that is it will create an array array means it's a collection of elements okay here we term it as list list of elements okay if you see the output you will be clear splitted string let me just write SPT STR or else let me do one thing let me print the type of it actually okay SPT STR and then I can write type of SPT STR okay here you can see like this it will be split based on the character that I have given okay see based on spaces it has been split and it is a type of list List is nothing but collection, collection of elements. It can be anything. Okay, it can be any elements. Okay. Now, if you want to be more clear on this, let me split using this character. Okay. Okay, like space is space. I'm going to split based on this set of characters now what happens this will be considered in one element and this will be considered in another element okay see now python script and then so efficient okay so based on the character that you are providing here it will be split into list list of elements that is the use of split command okay okay now let me report it back or else for example if you are not giving any character inside by default it will take the space only okay by default space is the delimiter if you are not providing any character by default it will take the space as the delimiter okay and next one is opposite to split is nothing but join okay now let's say join string is nothing but you are joining all the elements in the uh, there is all the elements present in the list based on one delimiter okay all right now let me write join of spt str so now i'm going to join all the elements present in spt str using this particular comma okay now see the output joint underscore str and then i can say type of joint underscore str you can see here now again it is back to string but now the delimiter is comma now the delimiter is comma here that is 
all the elements in the list have been concatenated using comma like this using comma like this okay all right guys any doubts any doubts guys okay thank you vinay thank you okay next one we are going to see replace function so now if we want to replace a set of strings or a particular character okay so now let me replace like string dot replace of okay i am going to replace so to so much okay and then let me print replace the string r e p s t r okay see here replace string is nothing but python script is so much efficient has been changed okay now you can have one question i have told string is immutable before right but i am changing the string now but here is like the original string still remains same see here original string still remains same see here python script is so efficient that is we are producing another string that's it from this particular string by replacing something here okay by replacing something we are producing another string that's it the original string is still remains same okay all right okay and then if you want to find the number of occurrences let's say count function okay for example i want to find the number of occurrences of yes number of occurrences of yes actually okay all right so now i can write string the count of yes okay so it has some two yes actually because it is case sensitive so only this one this one has been considered if you want to consider the case insensitive what you can do is you can convert everything to lower and then you can count everything like yes see now there are three yes yeah that is this one this one and this one so there are three yes actually okay so these are the few functions that we can use with a string okay so does anybody have any doubt on to uh, conditional statements okay so if you guys have any doubts please let me know we'll move on to conditional statements let me wait for some 10 seconds okay thank you guys thank you now i'm going to create a new file called conditional statements now we are going to get more pythonic thing okay so what do you mean by conditional statements conditional statements are the one which decides the flow of execution okay conditional statements are the one which decides the flow of execution all right okay so sorry we have several forms of conditional statements first let me write simple if first let me write simple if that is it will evaluate one condition let's write if of true true is a keyword here capital t rest are in small similarly false is a keyword 
capital letter rest all in small letter and then colon here we don't have any curly brace to indicate a block here colon indicates you are starting the block and indentation okay is very much important in python okay indentation decides the block that is in idle okay uh sorry guys sorry uh, megna has one question that sorry to interrupt can you please explain the immutable thing which you explained earlier after replace method sure megna sorry guys for that okay that is i have told you okay okay let me open in idle itself that's better i have told you string is immutable that means individual elements of the string can't be replaced that is for example if i say string of 0 is equal to let me say c i am trying to change the individual element actually that is individual character i am trying to change okay in this case if i execute you can see error see here string object doesn't support item assignment okay that is we can't do this all right so what i was trying to tell here is when it is what is happening here is it is producing another string it is not getting replaced in the original string that is it is not impacting a string which we are operating on okay see now let me execute this one you can see here replace string is python script is so much efficient the original string still remains same python script is so efficient okay that is what i i was trying to tell whenever you do replace it is not trying to change the original string it is producing one more new new string actually okay okay megna are you clear with this megna yeah thanks megna Does anybody have any other doubts? Let me wait for ten seconds. Please let me know if you guys have any doubts. I'll be moving to conditional statements. Okay. Megna has one more question. That happens if you do string is equal to string dot replace, then it will be reassigned, right? Yes, it will be reassigned. It's nothing but you are reassigning the entire string. You are not changing one particular character, right? So it is like you are reassigning the entire string. the reference itself is will be created newly it will not have the same reference okay megna yeah thank you it is like assigning a new value to the string only okay fine megna yes thank you okay and let me close this and let me close this and coming back to this yeah so in idle what happens is open and press enter you can see that indentation it takes care of automatically okay that decides the block let me write print statement 1 and let me write print 
statement two, print statement three. Okay, I am now. I am coming out of indentation like this, and then I am writing after if statement. Please listen carefully because blocks follows the same methodology, whatever it is. If it is a if condition, that is, if it is a conditional statement, iterations, functions, exception handling. Classes and methods. Okay, everything follows the same convention. Okay, now what happens here? I have indented these three statements to the same level, but not the last statement. What does it indicate? It indicates these set of statements are within this particular if block. This is like this is like outside the if block. So if I execute this, you can see the statements are getting printed like this. That is statement one, statement two, statement three, and after each statement. Okay. For example, let me say if for false. Now what happens is you can see just after each statement only is getting printed. That is, this block is not executed. Okay, then let's have this block as well. Is colon again block is getting started. Statement four, statement five, statement six. Okay, now if I execute this, you can see this block is getting executed. That is, else block will be getting executed. I'm coming out of this, and then after if statement is getting printed. For example, consider you have given like this. Okay, one more indentation level you have given. Unexpected indent. Okay, so. If you give one space for the first statement, you have to give the same level of indentation throughout the block. So by default, we take one tab character as indentation, and that is the best coding practice when you indent. That is the best coding practice when you indent. Okay, so let me just get it back. Now it will execute without any errors. Indentation is a very, very best factor in sorry, best feature in Python. It decides the block, okay? And nobody can't write messy code because you can do in C, Shell script, Perl script, uh, Java like that, okay? Even you can write the some ten statements in a single line itself by separating semicolons. You can do it. But here we can't do. Okay, that's why it is very easy to maintain because writing coding is very easy. But writing coding, that is, write coding um, in accordance to the best practice is very very difficult. Python, all the blocks are indented. You can't write messy code. Okay, all right. So, hope you clear about the indentation and the blocks because this is what we are going to follow throughout the Python programming. If you are not clear with indentation, please let me know now. If you are not clear, with indentation, please let me know now. I will just waiting for ten seconds. Please let me know now if you are not clearing with indentation. Please let me know now.
okay thank you thank you hope you are clear okay so shall we take some 10 minutes break and then we'll continue with conventional statements yeah okay guys so now we take some 10 minutes break and then we'll continue with conditional statements and we'll end the session with iterators okay so two more topics needs to go for the day all right okay so let me session details on this is i
Hello guys, can we start? Hello guys, can we start? Yeah, okay. So we have seen just a simple if else statement, okay? Next one, what we are going to see is, is multi-level if else statement. Multi-level if else statements. Okay, that is, we can write, like let's take num is equal to 5. Okay, and then I'm checking num is equal to 1. Then I can write print number is 1. Okay, and then I can have multi level if else conditions like this. Okay, multi conditions we can have. Okay, so print I can write number is 2, and similarly I can write num is equal to 3, then I can have print number is 3. Okay, else I can write like other number that is what happened here is okay uh, we all know num is num has the value 5 x okay so now first this condition will be checked if it is true okay if it is true once again guys i just missed one statement of third multi level if a statements Okay, see num is equal to 5. If it is true, it will execute the set of statements within that particular block and then it will come out here. Consider this condition is failed and next condition will be checked. Okay, if this condition is successful, then this particular block will be executed and then it will come over here. Okay, so now this condition is also failed. This condition is also failed. Okay, then it will come to this particular condition. If it is success, this will execute this block and then it will come out. If all the conditions given are failed, then by default it will come to the else block. Okay, you can have a number of levels. It is not mandatory that you should have only three levels. Okay, you can have any number of levels. So now if I execute this, you can see other number, that is, else block is getting executed. Okay, and you are seeing the output as after multi-level equal statements. Okay, so this is alternative to switch case statement. Switch case. There is no switch case statement in Python. Okay, there is no. Okay, you have only these two formats, either simple if else or multi-level if else. And next one, nested if else is there. That, that means is if condition, there is if block within another if block. Okay, that is the most important thing you have to be very careful is with indentation. When you are writing nested if else, right? Okay, you should be very careful of the indentation. Okay. See now, let me have num is equal to 25. Okay, now let me add some condition. If num greater than or equal to 100, I can write print number is greater than or equal to 100. Okay, and I'm writing one more equation here. If num is less than or equal to 150, Okay, then I can number is lesser than or equal to 150, like this. Okay, like this. All right, if is equal to 125, in print, I can write number is equal to 125, like this. Okay, now the challenge here is. You have to write the if sorry, you have to write the else block for each and every shop. Okay, how you can write? See here, I can write else here. 
that is else should be appropriately that is else should be indented in appropriate that particular else statement you should not write else here. okay this will throw a okay here let me write else like this okay number is not equal to okay let me write number is not equal to 125 see here invalid syntax okay so it is not like you can write a statement here okay so the indentation should exactly match see here like this you need to write okay and similarly if you want to write the else block for second yield indentation should be matched like this okay else print number is greater than 150 like that and similarly you can write else over here on the first if okay print number is lesser than 100 number is lesser than 100 okay so now you execute you can see it's getting successfully executed it is number greater than or equal to 100 this is or equal to 150 and equal to 25 okay. if i have something like 10 okay you can see the different flow number is not equal to 100 Consider I have one file here. So you can see some different flow here. Just two statements are getting. Here. But if I give just a few files, okay? Now you can see only one script will be getting printed. Number is less than hundred. Okay? So these are the base forms that you can write in statements. Simple if else, clear if else, this type. Okay? Hey guys, any doubts? Any doubts on this? So please let me know if you guys have any doubts. I'm going to uh, teach iterators. I'm going to teach iterators now. Is clear, right? Everybody have heard this? Thank you. Okay, so now let me create one more file for iterators. Iterators py. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. So here we have two different types of iterators. First one, let's see while loop. That is while iterator. while iterate okay while is same as like other programming languages very simple okay like let me define count is equal to 1 and write while count is less than or equal to 5 okay and then you have to place colon and the block is getting started okay and then i can write count i can write count here And then we do have increment operator. That is, count plus is equal to one. That is very much important. Otherwise, it will lead to infinite loop. This is while iterator. Okay. See here, one, two, three, four, five. There is only one form you can use it with this. Okay. It's very simple. Okay. And For loop, let me write for loop. It is for iterator. Okay. So as I told before, okay, as I told before, string is an object that is individual elements can be read using indexes. Right. So now let me do. It is for iterator. Okay, so let me do now for cat in Python. Okay, let me print 
that we print cat is nothing but cat. When you iterate through the string, what happens is it will print each and every character in the string. C, P, Y, T, H, O, N. When you iterate through a string, in each and every iteration, it will print individual characters. P, Y, T, H, O, N. Car is not the keyword. Car is not the keyword. Okay. It is a variable name. All right. And if you want to, okay, we have seen split method, right? We have seen split method. So for word in Python is much more efficient. Okay, let me get it. We know it will split into collection of elements called this. Okay, now if I print now if I print word, now what happens here? It will print each and every word in each and every iteration. That is, Python is much more efficient. That is, when you take the list, it will take via that is every element of the list. That is the difference between iterating through the string and iterating through the list. Okay. Okay, all right. This is one type of part. Okay, any doubts so far? Any doubts? Okay, thank you. And next one, let me use range function. For example, okay. If you want to iterate through a range of numbers, okay, what you can do is you can say for num in range of six, you can say like a number num. What happens here is when you give range of six, by default, it will start from zero until six. That is 0 to 5, it will be iterated. See here, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, for example, if you give 1, 6, what happens is it will iterate through 1, 2, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. It will iterate through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Similarly, if I give two here, you all know the slicing we have seen, right? The same concept. First, it will be one, then one, two, three, plus two, five. Okay, so these are the several ways we can iterate to ranges. Okay, by default, range gives you the numbers list of numbers within the specified range list of numbers within the specified range actually okay any doubts any doubts so far guys any doubts let me wait for some 10 seconds so please let me know. Even if you are clear, just ping me. Guys. Okay. Fine. Okay. So now we are going to see loop control statements. Okay. We are going to see loop control statements okay what do you mean by loop control statements what do you mean by loop control statements okay so that okay before that 
Okay. Um, let me just write x part. See, like we have else part in conditional statements, we have else part in looping statements as well. Okay. Like, let me just write one loop for num in range of one comma five. Okay. I can write number is like num. Okay, and then I can write else here. This else should be in sync with for. This is the else block for this for iterator. Okay, and then I can write uh, loop completed successfully. Okay, that is once the loop is completed, once the iteration is completed then the else block will be executed okay once the iteration is completed then the else block will be executed okay it will give you one comma six okay yeah you can see here one two three four five and then i'm getting the message loop completed successfully okay that is it has completed with all the iterations now you can have the question that I can place this loop, sorry, this statement just after the iteration. Like that is like this. That is like this. Now if I execute, it will give the same output. See here and then see here. But what is the purpose of having a slot? You might have the question. Right? I will explain that. Take break statement. Okay, I'm giving some condition like if num is equal to three, I'm giving break here. Okay, if num is equal to three, I'm giving break here. That is just to print one and two. That's it. Okay, you know, you just print one and two. Now you can't see this else block is getting executed. That is because we are killing the for loop explicitly. Whenever that is, we have we haven't completed all the iterations. Okay, we haven't completed all the iterations. Okay, we are killing the for loop explicitly. So in this case, only in this case, yes dog will not be executed. Okay, this is called break. That is based on some particular condition, you are breaking some particular loop. That is called break. Okay. And next one, let's have. Okay, let me have like break. Okay. Okay. Next one, let's have continue. Break. Continue. Print. Continue. Okay. Now, let's say for some six. Okay. And here, what I'm going to do is number to three. Let's say, let's say continue. Okay. I'm, I'm printing number now. All right. And then I let me have this button like print loop updated successfully like this. Okay, loop successfully like this. So now what happens? Which printed? Okay, now what happens? Which will be printed? When it is one, it will be printed. When it is two, it will be printed. When it is three, this statement will be executed. Now, what happens? It will not terminate the loop. What happens is it will continue with the next iteration. That is, you go to four, then it will print, then five it will print. Then it will come to the S block, it will print, and then it will come up. See, one, two, four, five. So loop completes the system. 
So only in case of break, yield stop will not be executed. That's it. Okay, but only in the case of continue, in the case of uh, there is no break or continue, this will be this this will be executed. Only in the case of break, it will not be executed. Okay. All right. Any doubts? Any doubts, guys? Any doubts, guys? Guys, please, you know, guys, please let me know if you have any doubts. Thank you. And next one, we are going to see short chain. This is not related with uh, loop control statements. Okay. This is like to define the AT block, we used to do parts. Okay. Consider you have something like this. It is num is equal to 5. And uh, if num is equal to one, uh, something like this, and if num is equal to two, uh, three, is two, is another number. Another number. So consider you want to place several conditions. Like this, m is equal to one, m is equal to two, or k conditions. Okay, so like you have got the logic for all the conditions, m is equal to one. But because you want this condition should be placed in your code for any future reference. Okay, it, it will do in a block. Okay, it should be. I can have a okay, that's not a problem, but okay, but use some bit of memory, right? So case I can define the empty block by having pause. Okay, pause is used to define the empty and it is also acts as a placeholder for future reference. Let's see what we are doing. Okay, so a statement is to find Okay, right. Okay, everybody. Okay, and and this is the point you guys have to read out. You need to ask the incident. Please let me know. Let's see what happens. 
Okay, let's see what happens. Let me give here number two or here some. Okay, and then here we three points like this. Okay, now what happens? It will throw some error, like must be string, not. Okay, what do I need? Both options should be string, not be. So, in order to cut the string, I can string of the points. Now you see, I three points is getting better. Okay, you can see. Five and three point six is a printer. Okay, like we also here. So it will be like three point six. Okay, so this is the condensation. This will change the use of operators. Okay, and next one we have. Partition operator. Okay, it's simple. Okay, it's very very simple. The repetition operator. That is, if number is equal to two star five. Print num. Print num. And string is equal to. They say five space star five, and then let's print string. Okay, like this. Okay, one second. This is again. So now let me execute this. Okay. See, two into three is nothing but multiplication six. But when I say Python into five is nothing but Python, 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 Python. There is the same string is getting printed for five number of times. Five times it is getting printed. Okay. The same string is being printed for five times. Okay, that is the okay. that is the use of addition of the okay and the last option for the day is membership operator. Membership operator. Okay, that is in and not in. In and not in. That is, if you want to check whether the substring is part of the string, okay? Let's have a string like Python is a scripting language. Now I want to check whether script is present in the string or not. I can write if string, sorry, if script in string. Then I can write script is present. Else I can write script is not present. Like this. Okay. So now if you execute the script is present, check whether the particular character or set of strings is present in the string or not. That's it. That is the use of membership operator. Not in is nothing but is used to check whether the particular string is not. Okay, so these are the topics. Like let me summarize today's session. 
we have seen variables in that we have seen different types of variables the type function and we have seen string like indexing slicing input method and various methods of string and then we move on uh, we moved on uh, to conditional statements we have three forms one is simple if else other one is multi level if else and third one is nested if else i am discussed about the indentation which is very important feature of python okay so any program write the very neat code in accordance to the best practices all right and finally we have seen iterators in this we have seen while iterator for iterator in several forms and loop control statements break and continue of a pause statement then we have seen concatenation operator repetition operator and membership operator okay so these are the things that we have covered today so what i will be doing is like now itself i will just place this code okay i will just place this code in lms material session 1 files choose file so let me go to the path i have saved in people dd day one dot set and then say okay so now you should be able to access it oh sorry but I... okay i mismatched actually okay it is for friday 28 today is 27 let me cancel that out okay yeah so course material say session 1 files choose file day 1 say and then say some okay then so i should be able to view the other side of it okay we should be able to view the files okay guys thanks for your time today and uh, swati has not still logged in okay guys you guys have any doubts uh, please speak me or let me unmute every one of you i have unmuted guys hello hello everyone hello everyone uh megna Namakrishna, Rishmi, Shruti, Soundarya, and Vinayak. You guys there? Uh, hi, Rashmi here. Ha, hi, Rashmi. Sorry, actually some noise. That's why I muted every one of you. I don't know from where the noise is from. Let me check again. Uh, you guys can ping me like if you have any doubts or if you are okay. So you guys can ping me if you guys are okay. with the session today i just want to know the feedback how the session was guys uh, request you to ping
Uh, okay, let me come one by one. Meghna. Meghna. Ramakrishnan. Reshmi. Shruti. Saundarya. And Vinayak. Guys, please ping me whether you are comfortable with today's task or today's topics. So just, I want to know or uh, if there is any technical difficulties. I have unmuted everybody, but it is not getting unmuted. Uh, I know, uh, I think if I unmute everyone, it is uh, something considering noise. And please come to see the part that I uploaded because it is uploaded here. So I just want to get the confirmation. The requesting you again to ping me whether you are comfortable with the topics today. Or if you are facing any technical difficulties. Is, uh, understandable. The ah, yes, topic yes, 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 yes. the session was good and it was uh, you know step by step everything was uh, understandable and uh, it went on good. Okay. The topics are clear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the session. Okay. Sorry. Tomorrow we we'll meet at 7. Yeah, sure, sure. 7.30 we'll meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, can we uh, unmute Megna? Uh, 